Hello everybody, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. Now in this video today, I would like to address some news that came out a few days ago, news that I found particularly exciting. And that was that Parsec announced that they're rolling out uh, hosting support for Macs on their Parsec platform. And uh, that's something that I've been waiting for actually. Uh, something that's going to be very, very useful for my personal workflow. Uh, so I thought I'm going to create a little bit of a video about what exactly it is, what you can do with it, and maybe you find that useful as well and integrate that into your workflow as well. Now, before I go into the details about what exactly Parsec is, let me first talk briefly about what it is exactly that I want to show you today. Now, what I have here is I have my old MacBook, my old production system. This is a 2016 MacBook Pro. Um, it is a 13 inch MacBook Pro. It, it was the first one with a touch bar, I believe. And uh, it has the latest Mac uh, operating system installed on it and it has Logic Pro installed on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Parsec in order to integrate that external operating system into my local Windows system. And that will essentially allow me to control, run and work with Logic on my Windows system as if this would be a Mac operating system. Uh, and that's obviously very neat because that will in the future allow me to make more videos about Mac stuff, about Mac systems, about Mac applications and about the things that only work on a Mac, even though that everything that I have here on my uh, actual video production system is Windows based. Now, uh, what exactly is Parsec? Uh, the, if, you have no, if you've never heard about Parsec, the easiest way to think about Parsec is to think of it as a remote desktop system. And uh, obviously they have many, they have, there have been many different desktop systems, remote desktop systems in the past, so this is nothing new. But what is new here is that it is the first system that is specifically optimized for gaming use. Um, it was meant for gamers to be able to game on a remote system and still have the same gaming experience on the local system. So, so the optimization here is uh, in terms of latency, it is a very low latency system and in terms of smooth user experience. Um, so you get a very, very responsive gaming like experience. And obviously, if it's good for gamers, it's also good for people that are in media production because we have the almost same requirements. So we can actually use that for our regular production work as well. And if you go to the Parsec website, they actually point that out. So this is actually something that you can use for animation, that you can use for, uh, you know, kind of uh, 3D modeling, that you can use for video uh, editing and uh, what you also can use for music production. Now, the other thing which is really nice about Parsec is that it is very low cost. There's actually a free version that has all the features included that we need. We wouldn't actually need to have the paid version. But even if you go for the paid version, it's still very inexpensive. The lowest tier comes in at about $10 a month, which is really, really low cost for a system like that. So we are going to use Parsec in order to bring Logic Pro into a Windows environment. And that's actually something that I think is really, really, really cool. So, uh, with that said, let's bring Logic Pro into Windows. So, how do we go about that? Well, the a couple of things we need to do first, actually. First of all, we need to make sure that the two systems are both connected to a network and they both see each other. Now, the uh, I, 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 in my particular case, both of them are connected to my local um, to my local network here in my in my house. Uh, through Ethernet. I also tested that through Wi-Fi. It even works through Wi-Fi. However, the recommendation is to use it uh, with Ethernet because that makes it a lot more stable in terms of the latency and everything. So if it if at all possible, connect them through Ethernet, but Wi-Fi works as well. Um, they need to see each other, so, which essentially means uh, they don't. It's, it's not good to have a firewall in between them, obviously. So they, they need to be able to communicate. But uh, if they can communicate, it doesn't actually make any difference where they are. So that uh, that remote machine, my, my MacBook, even though I have it local here next to me, could be anywhere. It could be in, a, in an external server room or in, in the next house down the street, or it can be in the next city or in a different country or on a different continent. It will still work. The only thing that's really required is that they see each other. Now, obviously, the farther you get away, the more late network latency you get into the system. But we did some tests uh, with Parsec where we had uh, one system System, the local, the, the server system actually in the United States and the client in Europe, and it still worked perfectly fine. So even across the ocean, uh, you can you can use that without too much problems. 
Um, now, in my particular case, this is not going to be an issue. I have everything connected here locally on my local network. So we need to have them connected to the network. And the second thing is with both machines need to have Parsec installed. And on the Mac, we also need to enable hosting. And I'm going to show you how to do that once we have the, the Windows system connected to the Mac system. But we need to enable hosting support on the Mac. And there are a couple of things that we need to do in order to enable that. I'm going to show that in a, in a second. Now, the, the next thing that we need to do is we need to simply start uh, Parsec on the client machine. So let me just start that here. And I've, uh, if you start it for the first time, it will come up with a login screen and you have to log into your Parsec account. Now I've already done that. That's why it comes up immediately. It shows me all the systems that are available for me. So at the moment, it's my MacBook, uh, which is next to me. That's the only one that I have here. I could have multiple systems that are all connected through Parsec. Uh, and all I really need to do is I need to connect. And as soon as I connect, I will essentially get the desktop environment from my MacBook on my Windows machine. And I can now work uh, on this as if I would be on the Mac, which essentially is next to me. Now there's a little button here. This is the Parsec button. Uh, if you don't like it, you can actually hide that. Um, but it gives you a couple of different options. Uh, and one thing that might be useful is essentially switching that uh, to full screen that will allow you to, to really kind of turn your Windows machine into a Mac machine, really. Now, uh, I said that there are a couple of uh, things, a couple of settings that you need to do on your Mac. And let me just show you quickly what those settings are. So if you open up uh, Parsec on your host machine uh, and you go into the settings, um, in the host uh, settings, and that shows preview, which essentially means that it's just a preview version, so it's not yet the completed version, so not everything that is available on the Windows version of Parsec is available on the Mac version of Parsec. Uh, and in the host settings, we need to enable a couple of things. First of all, we need to enable hosting so that my local machine here, the, the, the Windows client, can actually see the Mac host. Uh, I should probably also enable stay awake to make sure that my um, Mac doesn't go to sleep um, because I'd like to actually be able to have, be it awake while I'm working here on my Windows machine. I can set the bandwidth limit. Now, in my particular case, it's it, set it to the maximum, which is 50 megabits per second. And I can choose what display I want to show. Now, if I'm with the free version of Parsec, I only have, uh, I can only show one display. If I have the paid versions, there's actually uh, more than one display that I can share. Now, in this particular case, uh, my MacBook only has one display, that is the laptop display, and I'm only going to share that one. Now, when you first, uh, first open that, that um, Parsec is going to give you a couple of warnings. And these warnings essentially say that you need to enable certain um, cert certain settings in, uh, in the, on, the, on the Mac that, that will allow the Parsec system to access certain uh, devices on your Mac. So you need to set the permissions. Um, there are, I think, four different permissions that you need to set. And Parsec is actually very nice in that it shows you those, these warnings with the link. Uh, you click on that link, it opens up the settings windows, you change the settings, and as soon as you've changed the settings, the warning in Parsec disappears. Uh, so so uh, once you are at the level where all these warnings disappeared, all the settings are correct and you don't have to worry about that anymore. The only thing that's left is this one warning about audio support um, because that requires the installation of a special audio device on the Mac or an audio driver on Mac. And you can simply download that here. It's a very early version, but it works actually surprisingly well. So there's no, uh, there, I didn't have any issues with it whatsoever. So you can download and install that. And uh, as soon as you've installed that, that device will allow the uh, host system to communicate or the audio from the host system to be channeled through to the client system and vice versa. So, so this allows the communication between the host and the client system uh, from the audio perspective. Now, you could technically go into the main settings of the um, macOS operating systems and change the main output device to that uh, Parsec capture device. Uh, but what we are going to do is we're going to do that directly in Logic Pro uh, and we're going to use that Parsec capture device as our audio device in Logic Pro. So let's start Logic Pro. And uh, before I continue, I should probably point out that uh, I'm not really an expert in Logic Pro. I have a license because it comes with the educational bundle. Uh, and I used to use um, Final Cut uh, a while back. Um, so I do have a license, but I never really connected to Logic Pro. There's something that 
it does not connect between me and that particular door. I do see that it has an, a number of really nice features. I do like the virtual drama. I think that's really cool. And I think that's something that the other doors should have as well. But uh, we never really kind of connected and uh, I never got really warm with that system. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, it's, it's just not something that I liked to use. So as a result of that, I'm not really good in kind of demonstrating Logic Pro. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply open up a template and then just going to play with the template a bit because all we really need to see is if the audio connection is working and if everything is running smoothly. Now, I have to admit that I'm uh, that this is already the second time I'm creating that video. And the, the first iteration, what I, what I did is I went to the demo projects and I opened up Billy Eilish's project uh, because that's actually really nice as a demo project. It has a lot of different features in there. There are a lot of plugins that I used um, and all kinds of stuff in there. You know, kind of it's very, very complex. So you can play around with all kinds of things. And we could actually see very, very well that everything runs very smoothly and the audio is perfect perfect between, between the, my host system and my client system here. But the problem is, as soon as I uploaded that to YouTube, it immediately triggered a copyright claim. And uh, while I first thought that doesn't really make a whole lot of difference, I'm not monetizing my channel anyway, so who cares? I ended up uh, still kind of uh, taking that down again and recreating that video because I, I, I felt it, it, it I pro should probably keep things as clean as possible. So no Billie Eilish, sorry for that. Um, what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to use an incredibly boring template and we're just going to play around with the virtual drama a bit because really all we need to see is that the uh, responsiveness is here and the audio is here. Everything else you need to believe me that's actually working. So let me open up the uh, electronic template. And uh, now, um, before we before we start, uh, we need to make sure that the audio device is set correctly. And if you remember, we had to we had to install the uh, the audio driver, the PASIC audio driver. So uh, we now need to set that in Logic Pro. So we go into the preferences, into the audio settings. And in the audio settings, we just need to make sure that the output device uh, and the input device is set to the PASIC audio capture. Uh, and what it will do is it will take the audio from Logic Pro within uh, my MacBook, will uh, pass it on to the PASIC audio capture, it will go into my Windows machine, into the PASIC application within Windows, and then from there it will be moved on to the, uh, the Windows audio system and then to my audio interface here, which then once again is connected to my mixer and video mix and everything and then essentially ends up in this video so uh so that's that's the only thing that we need to do and as soon as we have that that uh, logic pro is now connected to my audio interface on my windows system and i can start play around with it so let me just play and as you can see essentially the uh the responsiveness of the user interface is is essentially exactly the way you would expect it to be No, I, I could also, can, can I, let, let me, oh, I think this one was, was pretty good. So I essentially can also play those. Now you already see there's one disadvantage here, obviously, um, because the, um, because the, the, uh, the Logic Pro is running on a remote system and my MIDI keyboards are connected to my local system, I cannot bring these MIDI keyboards into the remote system. That's currently not yet possible within Parsec. There are similar applications out there that actually allow that, where you can pass on a USB device to your remote, to remote system. But within Parsec, in particular within the Mac version of Parsec, this is not yet possible. I would expect that this is going to be something that they're going to implement pretty soon but for the moment being you are limited to your mouse and your keyboard as your input devices and you can't really use any other media devices or anything else so so that's the that's the only disadvantage that you have right now so this is everything I wanted to say today. Um, uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please uh, post them in the comment section below. I try to answer everything as soon as I can. And I actually also use your comments and questions quite a bit in uh, figuring out what my next videos are going to be. So if there's anything you would like me to talk about, you anything that you would like to see, uh, just let me know. And uh, I'm most likely going to pick that up. Um, if you like the content that I'm doing, please consider subscribing. Other than that, uh, do all the things that people do on YouTube, like uh, ring the bell or push, push the bell so that it rings for you. And uh, other than that, see you at the next video.